Hey Forge members and welcome to the seventh tutorial in this React series. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect React to a backend. This is something that I had a ton of trouble doing. I found like maybe 10 different Medium articles online, uh, 10 different tutorials online that I was trying to follow in order to do this. And I found out it's actually really simple um, if you know the steps. So in this video, I'm just going to try and show you the simplest way to do it. And to do it, we are going to be using a backend framework uh, backend framework known as Express. If you haven't used Express before, don't worry, it's very easy to use. It's essentially just a backend framework, and what that means is you can make HTTP requests to it from your front end, and that will allow you to do things like um, if you want to connect to a database, you can send an HTTP request from your front end to your back end, which then queries it to your database. And you're probably wondering, well, why do we need the data? Oh, why do we need the back end there? Why can't we just send it from the front end? And the reason is because um, your front end renders on client side. And what that means is everything that your front end is doing will be accessible to your user. And if you're querying a database, you're probably going to be using things like credentials. And you don't want your users to be able to see the credentials that you're using or anything else uh, in that sort of uh, sort. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And the first thing we're going to do is you can see here, um, I'm going to quickly remove, uh, I've created a folder. And I've called it video seven. So here we can see like are all the other uh, react applications we have made. Um, and I created a folder called video seven. And when you're making a project that has a back end and a front end, um, they're both separate projects. They're separate node projects. Therefore you want to keep them in sep uh, separate. Um, you want to keep them in separate folders. So I'm going to go ahead and make a directory called uh, my backend, and this will be where my backend code is. And when we're ready to make uh, the React frontend, I'm going to make a specific directory for that. So let's go ahead into my backend, and we're simply going to follow uh, the express uh, documentation on how to make a very simple express project. So the first we're gonna, thing we're going to do is we're going to create an npm project by doing npm init. Uh, we're going to keep all of this stuff to default. Um, for entry point, you can keep everything as it is, just uh, click enter over and over again. And you can see all that it'll generate is a package.json. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is install and save express. So we can do npm i express dash dash save. And this might take a little while, it's pretty fast. And what will happen when you do it is if you'll see that we have now a node modules, a package lock.json, as well as our package.json. And if we were to quickly look into our package.json, we'll see here that under dependencies, Express is one of them. So that's how you know that it is installed correctly. So the next thing we're going to want to do is set up a very, very, very simple backend server. So let's open up VS Code and look at it through there. So you can see here, I'm going to simply open up uh, that same videos uh, folder that I had before. And you're going to see here it is. So we have uh, our package. Uh, we have our package.json. So we're now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, I'll just move this over to the side. We're going to create a new JavaScript file and we can call it something like app.js. Now we can go ahead and copy all of this stuff uh, um, on here. So if we look over here, we're going to see pretty much all we're doing is we're getting a uh, in JavaScript, if you're not familiar, all we're doing here is we're simply importing Express. We're specifying a port. Now, you should note that Express uh, actually runs on the same default port as React, which is 3000. So we can go ahead and change this to 5000 so it doesn't conflict with React uh, when we get to it. So now, what it does is, if you're not familiar with HTTP requests, all that's going to happen is if I were to send an HTTP request to localhost port 5000 slash, it will send this string back, hello world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type, um, so all, all you have to do to run this is type node app.js. Oh, don't forget to CD into the my backend folder. So now that I'm in this folder, I could type node app.js. And you'll see here, it says example app listening on port 5000. So if I were to go to my web browser and I were to type in localhost 5000, you would see here it just returns 
uh, hello world on the page. And there's an actually easier way to test this. Um, there is a tool that a lot of developers use, and it's called Postman. And Postman is used for testing uh, your HT your um, HTTP request to a local backend. So our backend is currently running locally on port 5000. So if I wanted to test the response, all I would have to type in here is local host 5000 and then the endpoint that we have here which is no which is the slash and I click send and you'll see here that I get hello world back. Now if I were to create another one, I can create another um, endpoint and I could uh, make it called uh, slash uh, new endpoint and then instead of sending hello world I can just send something like this is my new endpoint um, and you can see here that if I send it to hello world if I send it to slash it'll be the thing but if I type in new uh, endpoint we can see here that I get oh uh, did I spell everything properly um, Oh, you have to rerun it, right. So let me rerun it, and now if I send the same request, you'll see here uh, it says this is my new endpoint. And there's a way to get around uh, having to rerun it every time. It's through this uh, node, uh, this NPM um, dependency called Nodemon, which I will show you in another video. But now that I have a very simple backend running, let's, um, let's do something simple like return uh, the weather. So I'm going to make an API for my React app. Let's say I want to have a React app and on the in the middle of my React app I want to have a button and when I click that button it will query my backend which will then get the current weather statistics for Toronto. So I have gone ahead and signed up on a website called Apixu which gives you uh, an API key, a free API uh, access to their weather API. Um, I used to use uh, weather, uh, Open Weather Map, I think is the name of the website for my weather API. However, it looks like they're dealing with some technical issues as their API keys, even with a verified account, don't seem to work. So I would go ahead and make a website. Uh, make an account on this website and you'll see here we can actually test out uh, this API on Postman before we actually move um, before we actually move over to Express. So we'll see here we're making a get request uh, our, our API key is here and then the city that we want to get the weather of is here. We can go ahead uh, and change that to Toronto and you'll see here it returns us this giant JSON um, with the actual weather and we can see the temperature in Celsius is currently uh, 10 degrees Celsius in Toronto. Awesome. So now what we want to do is we want to make it so that whenever uh, we have an endpoint and whenever we hit that endpoint in our express, it will simply return uh, the weather in Toronto. So we can go ahead and say uh, make a new endpoint and call it something like uh, get Toronto or get weather Toronto. Um, and what we can do is just follow the same syntax and then here is where we can decide what we want to send. So um, it, what we would do here is we would actually use a package um, to make an API request. So in order to do this quickly, we're just going to use the request library in JavaScript. We're simply going to import it uh, by making it a variable, and then we're going to take uh, some basic request code. So this guy right here, um, all this is going to do is it's going to make an HTTP request to whatever URL you put here, and then at the very end, it's going to... Uh, if there wasn't an error and the status code is 200, which means it is successful, it's just going to console log uh, what we have. So we can go ahead and replace Google with uh, the weather API URL with your key and everything in there. Remember, we're not trying to make an actual backend. We're just trying to get a proof of concept up and running so we can connect it to React. And um, what we're going to do is we're just going to have res dot send and then the body which is our um, response so now if we come into here uh, if we come back to here and we test our endpoint oh we have to restart it so let's quickly uh, let's quickly cancel this and it seems like we have a syntax error so um, Oh, that's weird. It cannot. Oh, so we have to npm, inst, uh, npm install 
request. And what is once that is done, we can go ahead and run our app and you'll see here if I now make a request to our endpoint, we pretty much get uh, the exact same thing as we got from our API. It just looks a bit uh, less nice. If we format it in JSON, we can see here that it's pretty much the same data. Now let's filter this out so it's a bit nicer. So all we actually see here is uh, the temperature in Celsius. So let's just simply add a line here to parse the body in JSON so that we can use it. And let's create a variable for the temperature C. If we remember, I believe that it was under um, the current weather and then the temp underscore C. Uh, so var uh, temp C is equal to that. And then when we send it, we want to send it uh, as a map like this. So let's go ahead and type Node.js. Uh, let's run our app again. If we go to Postman and we send it, we can see that uh, what we are getting back whenever we query our endpoint is uh, this map with one index, which is uh, or one key, which is temperature in Celsius is equal to ten. So we are pretty much done on the uh, we are pretty much done on the backend side. So let's uh, open up a new terminal. And let's create a React app. So create dash React app, and let's call it my front end. And this will be in the same folder uh, as uh, video seven, but it's not in the same folder as the backend one. So you can see here within video seven, we have um, my backend and my front end, and they're two different folders and two different node projects, which means the actual node dependencies are not shared between them as well. So my front end will not actually have um, you know, uh, the node dependencies like express and request uh, that we installed on it um, within its package uh, .json, which we'll see in just a second. So now that is, this is done installing, we can go ahead and cd into uh, the front end. And we can type npm start as we usually do. And we'll see that it'll just start our default, um, our default React project. So we'll see here. Um, and also, if we take a look and go into the file structure, we can see that everything is as it usually is. So we'll come back here. This is still loading. We can go ahead and delete this test. Um, and for now, let's keep most of uh, let's keep most of uh, this stuff in here. I'm just going to show you uh, basically right. Okay, so we can see that's working. Let's create a new component and we'll call this like, I don't know, weather.js. And in our weather.js, we're just gonna create a standard React component. Um, and we'll say here, the weather in Toronto is, and we won't actually fill it out just quite yet. Um, so what we can also do is have a button and we'll, name that, we'll have that button say, get weather in Toronto. Toronto. Uh, and then we can go ahead and create a state. So uh, let's create a constructor and then call super. And then let's just say this dot state is equal to, and then in our state, we'll set a weather variable and we'll have the weather set to zero by default. Or let, yeah, we'll have it set to, or let's have it set to um, not yet gotten. So then over here, we can just have this uh, call this.state.weather. Now let's go ahead and use our import our weather. And let's, uh, let's delete all this stuff and just pop it in here. So we can see here, we're going to come back and we'll say, uh, we'll see the weather in Toronto is, and then it's like, <laughs> uh, not yet gotten. And this button doesn't really do anything. So now here is where uh, the magic actually happens. We are going to now go ahead and link our um, React uh, front end with our Express back end. And this is how you do it. We are going to go into the package.json in our front end and under private, we're going to add a new variable called proxy. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that proxy to um, local host of whatever our front end or whatever our backend's port was running on. So in our case, it was 5,000. 
Now, what that does is if we ever make a request to uh, an endpoint and it can't find it on the front end, it will automatically try to get it on this port. And I'll show you why that's useful. Let's go ahead and here and create a, a component did mount function. Component did mount. And when the component, so in this component did mount function, what we're going to want to do is let's say we want to uh, just have it make a very simple HTTP request uh, to um, our backend. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use another uh, dependency, another library called Axios, which is a really, uh, a really good framework for making API requests within React. So let's go ahead and come in here and we'll make another terminal and we're already in the front end. So we'll do npm i axios and save it. So while this is installing, essentially what Axios is going to do is we're going to make an HTTP request to uh, slash uh, our endpoint and our endpoint was get weather in Toronto and when it sees that we're not able to find it on a uh, react port which is 3000 it will check to see if the endpoint exists on our proxy uh, which is uh, which is the 5000 port and that's where it'll find our backend it'll query it and it'll return the result in Axios now what we can do is we can go ahead and import Axios and now uh, this is what the syntax will look like when we want to make the request. So it's simply just calling the get method of Axios which denotes we want to make a get request and then the URL that we want to make the request to. So in this case it is slash get weather Toronto. And then we have a function here that will tell us what to do. Now, it's worth noting that if we want to be able to set the state and use the um, this keyword in here, we, we should switch it to the arrow functionality so that this actually gets passed in. Now, let's go ahead and see what happens. So let's comment this out for now. If we go ahead and console.log, just the response, let's see what it looks like. So this will run on component did mount, which means it's already run. And we look at our console and we can see here that it passes us this huge object that we're getting from our backend. It includes the headers, uh, the request object, and the data that is actually being passed through. So this is what we're interested in. So if we type dot data, we can come back and see that the data is the same temperature map that we were getting in uh, Postman. So in this case, all we really care about is the temperature. So we would do response.data.tempc. Now instead of console.logging it, let's set the state to it. So we can say this.set state, and we're going to make it so that weather is going to be equal to um, uh, response.data.tempc. Oh, and don't forget our curly braces here. Cool. So now you'll see here, as soon as we uh, come onto the web page, um, it'll show exactly what the weather in Toronto is. And you'll notice from the beginning of the video to here, it decreased one temperature. It's getting later here. Um, but let's just make this consistent and let's make it so that it only gets it when we click the button. So we can change this method to something like handle button click and then add an on click handler for this button. Okay, so now if we come back, when we first come here, the weather will not be gone, but as soon as we click Get Weather in Toronto, bam, it updates to whatever the current weather in Toronto is. So there you have it. That is how you hook up an Express backend to a React frontend. Now, it's worth noting, when you're making API requests in, a, uh, with, in React, um, you actually don't want to have it in these type of places because sometimes those requests uh, might take a while and it could cause your entire component to sort of hang and time out if the request doesn't go through. And the proper way to do that is by using another library known as a uh, Redux Saga or Thunk. Um, either one of the two. And in the next videos, I'm going to introduce you to what Redux is uh, because we're at that stage. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to use Redux Saga. And that will be where you'll see where to put your API requests um, for your backend and the proper way to do it uh, for development projects and production projects. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.